Guys, welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel. You know, a lot of the benefit of tuning into a channel like mine is I get to share my personal tutorial. I think a lot of people, when they get involved with the stock market, they get advice or they get recommendations from somebody and they don't understand why they do what they do. And I think understanding the why is going to help you persevere during times of volatility when the stock market uh, gets a lot more difficult to hold true and those recommendations that you may have gotten from somebody else may have sounded really great at the time that you got them but if you don't understand why if you don't understand what strategy is being placed behind a specific investment I would rather see you not invest at all because chances are you're going to incur that volatility and you're probably going to get shaken out of the market and that's the last thing that we want to see happen what we want to see happen is investors get involved with the stock market in either a defensive capacity or an offensive capacity or all of the above. But in any case, you want to make sure that you can stay tried and true on your program and making sure that you get just about as in line with your risk tolerance to the stock market that you can possibly handle to stay and hold true for the long term and not try to be wishy-washy on the market. If anybody's paying attention to this market, we just gained back a thousand Dow points and we did it with nobody talking about it. Um, the, the market uh, dipped uh, quickly below 30,000 for a short stint and we raced back up over 31,000. There's nobody out there, guys, that can effectively time the market on a consistent basis. There's a lot of people that would uh, have you believe that they can um, and it's just impossible. So what we're going to do is we're going to share my five investing really philosophies. It's tech, these are techniques that I actually do. I share uh, tidbits of these philosophies on the channel, but um, this new setting of mine allows me to come on and really help uh, explain to you why I do these certain things and why when you couple these things together, they make all the sense in the world and they can make sense for you too. And the idea is that you identify the why for you so that you can hold true over the long term. Let's get into it. What makes the Independent Investor Channel very unique in nature is that I don't go with a financial planner. I am just that, an independent investor. Some may consider it a self-managed investor. Some may consider it um, a self-directed investor. In any case, we seek out our exposure to the stock market and we do so without the compliments of a financial planner. And for a lot of people, they may say, hey, time out, Ryan, I'm out. I, I need to have my financial planner professional. I, I think people are becoming very, very hip to a couple of things. And here they are. Financial planners are expensive, okay? Financial planners do not work for free, okay? The industry standard of fees over time is going to run you about 2 to 3% management fees. A very simple calculation will give you the insight as to why this needs to be something that is acknowledged and it is something that is either accepted and understood of the ramifications over the long term or something that's avoided altogether. And I know enough about the bottom line savings over the course of a lifetime which could render hundreds of thousands of dollars to the bottom line investor by just taking a different strategic angle and it doesn't give you any less of a strategic uh, disadvantage to the market it's actually contrary to that depending on the financial planner that you may choose to opt with you may be pigeonholed into a suite of products that may not be in your best interest and I may beg to suggest that it may actually be in the financial planners best interest to sell you those products maybe a high priced mutual fund uh, as opposed to going with a low-cost entry ETF, which Vanguard has really coined and captured the market. Uh, a lot of uh, the other major brokers, of course, offer similar products, whether it be total market exposure uh, or dividend ETFs. They're all a wonderful way of, of entering into the stock market and doing so passively in markets without being subject to the whims and ways of what somebody else thinks is good for you. And I always contend that for people who don't want to know anything about the stock market, perhaps maybe a 401k or dare I may say a financial planner professional could be good for you. But the, the, the sheer reality is that you can do it on your own. And there are products out nowadays to assist in just that. Number two, 
and it's coupled with the no financial planner type of objective. If you looked at the total expense over my portfolio, I manage around a half a million dollars of assets. I do so on a blue collar salary. And if you looked at the total expense over my account, the single stocks that I own carry zero. Uh, and so I invest for free. And anymore, this is key. Within the last five years, brokers like Robinhood have really turned the market on its ear. And it's really forced a lot of the major brokers to come on board and provide access to stocks free of charge. So there are no more entry and exit fees. Um, there are assisted trades out there, but who in their right mind is paying that in 2022? I have no idea why or how you would ever do that, as well as with maintenance fees coupled to Roth IRA, investment accounts, $100 uh, a year for what? You're not paying for anything other than just an arbitrary fee that the financial planners have just decided to attach to your right to own these accounts uh, outright. So the real key in being an independent investor is really adhering to that idea of lowering, drastically reducing, or even eliminating in certain capacities uh, the fees within the accounts. A strategy that's different from me and a lot of other investors out there, and I catch a little bit of flack for this, is I own multiple accounts. The accounts that I own could house some cryptocurrency, it could house some bond investing with some fixed income. I do own my 401k-like uh, retirement account uh, with my employer. Um, I do have a dividend growth uh, strategy. I do have a passive strategy in two separate accounts. Uh, and finally, I've got my flagship accounts with the Roth IRA and about a half a dozen uh, taxable brokerage accounts. So. Uh, all told, I'm up over 20 buckets, and, and a lot of people might think, that's crazy, you should consolidate those buckets down. Just wait a second. You need to understand that each and every one of those buckets are achieving a specific strategic advantage for me, whether it be the savings account, whether it be the Roth IRAs, the tax-protected and low-expense account for myself and my spouse, or it be the 401k program, the thrift savings plan, myself as a government worker, enjoy. And it makes it so much easier to manage those programs and it makes it really easy to identify those pockets in the portfolio that may be performing well and even some of those areas in the portfolio that may be taken a little bit on the chin. And it allows me to kind of observe and monitor the portfolios. I don't mix buckets if I'm going to fund the dividend growth strategy, I do so. And typically, I adhere to a dollar cost average program for all of my accounts, minus the hyper growth stuff, which is really kind of an investment and, and hold and monitor those, those assets. But for those good, well established companies in the dividend growth and the passive buckets, I just fund those. And I found that over time, even starting a new account with just $500 can really help in building up your, your assets bucket. I would not recommend that a new investor try to establish 20 accounts at the same time. But what I would suggest is always looking to evolve and always looking to build out your strategy. And I contend that multiple buckets as well as multiple holdings within your portfolio can, can really round out and, and really make a dynamic portfolio for you uh, of a lot of different moving parts. When you're off earning that money, maybe at your nine to five job, you know that your portfolio in many different aspects are working for you. One thing that I do in my strategy that um, allows me a lot of freedom and sleep easy time is I do save to cash. And this is something that really, it, it does fit in with my philosophy of being an independent investor. A financial planner is not in any way or capacity going to justify sitting across from me with that type of money and say it makes sense for you to have thirty forty fifty thousand dollars of cash on the side that money needs to be working for you and there is some truth to that but here's the here's the ironic part when the market is going bananas everybody says people who are in cash are crazy but then when the market rolls off twenty percent like we are in right now cash is king I'm strategically funding the market low and I'm taking the opportunity cost of those dollars that were stagnant, yes, for a long many months and, and injecting those in the market at a time that is more conducive to add to the market. 
Now, don't be don't be misinformed uh, in that the cash on the side affects my dollar cost average schedule. See, I do both. So when it's time to actually put lump sum investing, that's where the cash comes in. But I'm always trickle feeding the market through a dollar cost average strategy. And the last thing that I'll mention here, I, I think a lot of people, and there's a lot of people out there that don't invest. 58% of households out there are living paycheck to paycheck. So what gives? I think people really need to be turned on by the idea of wealth building for them and their, and their families. A lot of households out there do not put the proper adherence to and attention to the idea that you can become a wealth builder, okay? It doesn't mean become a gambler. If you don't even like the word investment, don't use it. Talk about building wealth. And just as I've expressed, you can build wealth in a lot of different capacities in your life, whether it be saving to cash, whether or not you get an infusion of cash, put that cash away and save it for a rainy day. Whether it be increasing your dollar cost average strategy to your dividend growth portfolio by 25 bucks. Maybe looking holistically at your portfolio and, and really just monitoring the funding streams that go into the portfolio. Me personally, uh, two out of every $10 that I earn goes right to my thrift savings plan. That is one bucket right before I even get paid that goes into my employer-sponsored uh, thrift savings plan or 401k-like program for you guys that have the same. So I'm always uh, analyzing and seeing whether or not I'm eligible to increase that. As the surplus capital in the budget increases, obviously that's an area of focus where I say either nay or yay to increasing those contributions to that. Once the paycheck comes in, we always fund to the Roth IRAs every year from a max perspective, and we're always trickle feeding the smaller accounts, the dollar cost average into those accounts, and it really separates me from a lot. I, I think I, if I was going to earmark and give you some idea, we're probably looking at about $2,500 per month uh, that goes to savings. And, you know, $2,500 anymore really doesn't get you a whole lot, okay? But the compounding effect coupled with that, uh, which what I would chalk up to be a pretty aggressive funding cycle, uh, can really accumulate to something special. And I, I think in the few coming short five to seven years, I think that's probably going to put us at that seven-figure mark. And, you know, the reason th that I come on here isn't to have people look and say, well, I want that six figures too. Of course you do. I think the deeper question is to understand and ask yourself, how does Ryan, uh, how does Ryan do this? And, and, and what makes sense? Why does Ryan do what he does? And, and why does this make sense to me? And that's what I look to share with investors out there because if you're to the market and you come on and you get an insight like mine uh, from an investor that's been investing 25 years, it can be very, very useful and very, very powerful to get you into the driver's seat sooner than later in your life and become an investor and move out of the arena of being a non-investor and, and becoming a participant in financial markets. Guys, if you enjoy the content coming through to make sure and subscribe to the channel, leave your comments at the bottom of the video if I've missed something, if I've missed some of the unique aspects of uh, independent investing, that is the beauty of it. Nobody tells me what to do and I expect that nobody should tell you what to do as I presume that you are the best advocate of your money. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the video and good luck in your investment future.